And in Revelation 5, 8, we see the first time where all the prayers have gone. And I want you to remember that. They're not getting lost. Keep praying. In fact, after the morning service, someone came to me and said, did you read about in the paper, you know, the, the uh, um, antique store fellow that was here in Kalamazoo, beaten to death with a bat? And that was one of their relatives. And he said, they said, that's, that's horrific. And I said, yeah, that's just like the 120 in the mosque. I said, it's horrific. Keep praying for God's kingdom to come because he's going to answer. Well, Revelation 5, God has something planned. And in verse 8, we see that the prayers of all humanity lifted up from all the saints, from Adam and Eve, throughout all the Old Testament era, through the New Testament era, right up to the most recent prayer, have, have been brought to his throne, brought in front of him, and God is so amazing. Every prayer has landed in one spot. Now, I don't know about you. The older I get, I have to start having these little patterns. I mean, when I walk in the house, I keep walking until I get to the place where I put my keys. And I always put my keys there. If anybody moves keys, I come and say, someone move those keys. Because I don't want to lose my keys. And I go right there. And then I go and I kick off my shoes and they go in this spot. Boy, wait till you guys get old. You start doing stuff in patterns. And if, if anything's out of place, it's just a disaster. Every prayer goes to one spot. There is that altar in front of the throne and those little bowls surrounding the throne. And God says, I don't forget. God doesn't misplace. He doesn't ignore us. He is treasuring up his wrath, as Romans 2.5 says. And it finally, like an electrical charge building, when you see, I remember when we used to live in Oklahoma, you can see for so far, you'd see those clouds, and then you'd see the thunderhead striking up, the cumulonimbus clouds just going straight up, and then they would hit the part of the atmosphere wherever they hit, and they anvil out, and you knew it was coming. And you could hear it in the distance, rumbling and finally the lightning would just start and that's what revelation 6 through 20 is it's the charge is building god is treasuring his wrath against sin and finally in revelation 6 it starts blazing like a thunderstorm well what's the context where is this introduced revelation 5 do you remember where we started months ago revelation 4 and 5 are a set and the set talks about worshiping God. Do you realize that all the horrors, and, and before we go today for 14 more minutes, I'm going to read to you real quickly a quick overview of the tribulation. But did you know all of those events take place as the saints are on their faces worshiping a holy God? We think of the tribulation kind of like a movie, like a war movie or something. It's not. It is a worship scene as all the redeemed are saying, God, we have prayed for your will to come and now you're doing it. And you are, you are conquering back the rebellion. And we bless your name for it. Well, the concept is this. In Revelation 5, verse 9, we find the final element of true biblical worship, and it's this. True biblical worship understands God's wrath is against unconfessed, unforsaken, and unforgiven sin. Now, the whole Old Testament is beautifully illustrating this. You know what Ezekiel said? He said to Israel, he said, your sins are like an avalanche on you. And what he said is people, people live their life and, and, and they don't realize they're piling up all these sins and if they don't do anything about it, the pile gets so big it just kind of buries them. Kind of like the two girls that were sitting on the railroad crossing this week and a some train had a problem that dumped hundreds of tons of coal on them, and they were texting, and they died under the coal. You know, it's, uh, I don't know what the lesson of that news thing was. Don't text or don't use coal, but it was in the news, you know, and it's just how we just have all these uncollected thoughts in the news. But God's wrath is against all those sins that bury us. And did you know this morning, at the instant of death, each one of us, are either going to die with our sins like an avalanche on us or all of our sins once and for all already on Jesus Christ. You understand that there's only two kinds of people in the world. Those that have the Son have their sins forgiven. Those who do not have the Son die under the avalanche of their sins and they're going to have to stand covered with their sins 
in front of a holy God that says, I offered you throughout your whole earthly existence to have those sins taken care of, and you refuse me, and so you get to carry them forever, and my wrath will forever burn against your sin. I offered for them to be taken away. You refused. You see, people don't go to hell because they never heard of Jesus. They go to hell because they're sinners. And the wrath of God is forever against sin. And by the way, your parents can't take away your sin. And water in a baptistry can't take away sin. The only thing that take away sin is me confessing and forsaking and receiving the free gift of the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, to cleanse me once and for all from all my sins, past, present, and future. Well, for those that don't, True biblical worship understands God's wrath is against all unconfessed, all unforsaken, and all unforgiven sin. So make sure when you leave today, if you leave here with any unconfessed, unforsaken, unforgiven sin, and you die, you know that person that was driving madly down I-94 in the middle of the night with their headlights off waiting to crash into someone? Do you think those people in their car thought they were going to be instantly killed in that fiery collision? No. They probably thought someday I'll figure out this stuff with God, you know? Do you realize that you don't know if you're going to make it home today? Don't die with your sins on you. If you do, you have to pay for them forever. That's what true worship says. 